Welcome to the flipped classroom assignment for geometry and we are going to do a similarity review. I am going to model three types of similar problems for you and then you are to complete the assignment on your own. Um, this worksheet is due on Monday and when you are completed with this worksheet I would ask that you would complete the survey that I have sent to your school email. So we'll start with number one, and the instructions tell us to mark all congruent angles in the figure given. And if you look down in the figure, two pairs of angles have already been marked congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle B is congruent to angle E. We know that the vertical angles at C are also congruent, and this is going to help us to build our similarity statement. Now I've already written the first triangle down as triangle ABC, so all we have to do is write down the second triangle in the order such that the corresponding angles are congruent. So when I look down in my figure, angle A corresponds to angle D because the tick marks show that angle A is congruent to angle D so I will write the first part of this triangle with a D. Angle B, which is the second letter here, has two tick marks on it. It is congruent to angle E in the other triangle, so therefore my second letter is E. And the third letter, C, obviously corresponds to itself because that is where the vertical angles are located and they are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent to each other. Once we have our similarity statement, we can write three equal ratios using the sides of each triangle. So again, this is a review. We will look at the first two letters, AB, so that corresponds to side AB in the figure, and side AB corresponds to the second, or the first two letters here, DE. Then we're going to look at the next two letters in the similarity statement, letter B and C, and that relates to side BC in the triangle, and side BC corresponds to side EC in the other triangle. Our third pair of corresponding sides, or our third ratio, comes from side AC, the first and third letter in the statement, and side AC is going to correspond to side DC, so first and third letter there. If we have our similarity statement correct, and we have written our ratios correctly, the rest of the problem becomes an algebra problem. You are going to plug in the values written in the diagram into your equal ratios. So I'm going to do that next to the triangle here. Segment AB is 10. Segment DE has the variable Y on it. Segment BC is 12. Segment EC is 4. Segment AC is 15, and segment DC has the variable X on it. As you look at these three equal ratios, all you need is to take two at a time and solve for the unknown variable. So here we would write 12Y equals 40, divide each side by 12, and we get y equals 40 over 12. Now what do we do with the 40 over 12? We go to our calculator, we turn it on, clear the screen. 40 divided by 12 is a repeating decimal, and so I would prefer that you leave those answers as improper fractions. So we're going to hit math to frac, and that tells us that y is 10 thirds. I'm going to come back up here and write 10 thirds in for y. How do we find x? We're just going to take this proportion and cross multiply to find x. 
12x equals 60. Divide by 12, x equals 5. And that is the first example of similar triangles, where the two triangles are not connected except for at the vertical angle. Here's another type of single, similar triangle example where one triangle is embedded inside of the other triangle. Again, we have been given the similarity statement. Take the similarity statement and write your equal ratios. So segment RV corresponds to segment RT. Now, I am not looking at the triangles to build my equal ratios. I am strictly looking at the similarity statement. Sometimes, if you look at the diagram, you may correspond the segments incorrectly, and therefore, I encourage you to look at the similarity statement and match up the sides correctly. So RV corresponds to RT. The next two, VU is going to correspond to TS. So side VU corresponds to side TS. Third ratio, side RU is going to correspond to side RS. Once I know I have those correct, I can then fill in the information from my diagram. So I'm going to look at RV, and RV has the variable Y on it, and that's what we're asked to solve for. RT, RT is this entire segment here, which is 48. VU has a 20 on it. See, there's VU. TS has an X on it. RU has a 25 and RS is this entire segment here, has a 40. So again, we're not going to be able to solve these two ratios first because we have an X and a Y. So I will look to solve for X first by taking this proportion right here and cross multiplying. So we're going to get 20 times 40, which is 800, equals 25X. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 25. So you can verify that. 20 times 40. There's my 800 divided by 25. And x is the value 42. So x equals, or 32. Sorry, 32. Now I can go back to the first two ratios and insert 32 for x and solve for y. So y over 48 equals 20 over 32. And again, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have 48 times 20. And that's 960 equals 32y. 960 divided by 32 is 30. And so y equals 30. So that is an example of where one triangle is sitting within another triangle. You're given your similarity statement, and you are asked to find different pieces of both triangles. The third example is a little more complicated because even though the triangle is embedded, it is somewhat twisted a little, and so it's very important that you get your similarity statement correct. How do you build your similarity statement when it's not given to you? You look for the corresponding angles that are congruent. So I see a 35 degree angle here, and I see a 35 degree angle here. So that means those angles are congruent which means angle D in the little triangle is congruent to angle C in the larger triangle. I also know that A, angle A, is an angle that appears in both triangles. It is in the little triangle. It is in the larger triangle. So now I have two pairs of corresponding angles congruent, which means those third pairs of angles automatically have to be congruent. 
And so I will use triple tick marks for the angle E inside that triangle and the angle B, which is in the larger triangle. Once I have my angles marked congruent, this will help me to write my similarity statement. You may write your first triangle however you want. So you can put the order of the vertices in whatever order you'd like. The triangle, I'm going to call the first one A, D, E. So A, D, E is my little triangle. Similar to triangle, and now here comes the matchup. Angle A is corresponding to itself. Angle A. Angle D, well let's look at angle D. Angle D has this single tick mark. It is going to correspond to angle C. Angle E, there's my triple tick mark, corresponds to angle B. And now I have my similarity statement. Now I can build my equal ratios. So again, AD corresponds to AC, DE corresponds to CB, and AE corresponds to AB. So there are my three equal ratios. Now I'm going to go to my diagram, and I'm going to fill in the information given to me. So AD has a 7 on it. AC has nothing on it. So I'm just going to write AC. DE has a 5 on it. And CB has a 10. AE, again, nothing on AE, so I'm just going to leave that as AE. And AB has two numbers on it, a 7 and a 9. And what will I do with those two numbers? I will add them together. 7 plus 9 is 16. Now if I look up here, it says determine the length of AE. Okay, so that's right there. And then it says EC. And I don't see EC in my ratios. But if I determine the length AC and I determine the length AE, I will be able to subtract to get EC. So let's solve for our unknowns. We're going to cross multiply here. We're going to get 16 times 5, which is 80, equals 10 times AE, which means AE is 8. And hopefully you saw that this was a 1 to 2 ratio, 5 to 10 is a 1 to 2 ratio, so therefore this has to be a 1 to 2 ratio, so AE has to be 16, or 8, because 8 to 16 is 1 to 2. So we now have AE, so I'm going to go ahead and put 8 right there on AE. Now I'm going to find AC, so I'm going to take this proportion, and I'm going to use that to solve for AC. So that's going to be 7 times 10 is 70, equals 5 times AC, which means AC is 14. So AC is the length of that entire side, and it's 14. AE, which is part of it, is 8. So I take that full 14 and I subtract 8. I'm going to get 6. And those were the two values that we originally were asked to find, side AE and side, or segment EC. So my answers are 8 and 6. Now if I went too fast during those examples, um, you may re-watch the video for a second explanation. And once you are done with that, I ask that you turn the paper over, and you're going to find three similar triangle examples on the back. I would like for you to complete these three examples on your own and turn this in on Monday, March 18th. The last thing that I would like you to do, as I'm reminding you,